Me'ilu daf yud zayin. When it comes to tuma, there's basically two categories that we can discuss. There's the length that the tuma lasts for. It's either till the evening or for seven days for human corpse tuma. And then there's the amount that you must touch or carry in order to become tummy. Sometimes it's bechadasha, lentil, sometimes it's kezayis. Says the Mishnah, if you have two pieces of tumma that share the same two categories, then they can combine. But for instance, if you take human flesh and a human limb, although they are both metama for seven days, but the shear, the amount you need to touch is different. When it comes to human flesh, you need to touch a kezayis. And a limb, as long as it's a full limb, even though it's less than a kezayis, it's metama. Therefore, those two cannot combine to create tumma. The same applies to a piece of an avela and a piece of sheretz. A sheretz and a vela are both metama for that day. However, a sheretz, as we learned yesterday, requires only a lentil's worth, and an avela you need to touch a kezayis. Therefore, they are not mitzvah. However, if we find a situation where two different pieces of meat have the same shear and the same length, then they're mitzvah for tuma. We will be going. There's a few pshatim here. How to explain the gemara? We're going to go with Rabbi Nisim Gain's pshat. Gemara says that the blood of a sheretz and the meat of a sheretz, both of them together can be mitzvah to one shear of an adasha of a lentil. Says Rav, that's talking about dafka if it comes and originates from one sheretz. But if even if it's the same type of sheretz, but it's two separate bodies, two mice, let's say, you take the blood of mouse A and the meat of mouse B, they do not combine. So the Gemara asks, we see from the Pasuk at Tmeim that two separate animals do combine. Says the Gemara, that's if you touch it all. But we're talking about he touched part of the sheretz, therefore you need it to originate from one. Gemara brings a raya from blood. Blood, if it's, if it's in one place, gathered in one bowl, let's say, or in one crevice, and you touch part of the blood, it's as if you touch the whole revius of blood. However, if the blood is on an incline, and it's moving away from itself, then just because you touch one part doesn't mean you touch the rest of it. You would have to do an oil on all of it in order to be metamit. So too, if you have separate pieces of meat, you'd have to touch it all in order to become Tommy. The Gemara goes into a beautiful story about Rabshim Bayuchai. He asked Rabshim Bayuchai, what is the source that the blood of a sheret is Tommy? And he said, because it says in the Pasuk, Vizelochem ha Some learn that the entire Pasuk is extra, some learn Vize, the Vav is extra, or ha the He is extra. Regardless, that's where we learn that the blood of a sheret is Tommy. Says the Gemara that he learned it from Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi What happened was, the Romans made three terrible Xerah's decrees on Klai Yisrael. First of all, they shouldn't keep Shabbos, they shouldn't perform Brismila, and they shouldn't go to the mikvah for Anida. Says the Gemara that Rabbi Ruben ben Mr. Rubli, he wanted to trick the Romans and he dressed up like a guy. He got a haircut like a Roman. He shaved the whole front of his head and he left a ponytail in the back. And he walked in there and he said, listen, your decrees don't make any sense. Because if you allow the Klai Yisrael to have a bris milah, it will weaken them for the rest of their lives. And if you allow them to keep Shabbos, they'll become poor. They won't have money. They'll have one less day to work. And if you don't, if you allow the, the women to go to the mikvah, then they will. It will also be detrimental for them. You'll they'll have less less kids by 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 keeping nida. When, so the Romans got rid of all three decrees, but when they found out that Rabbi Ruben was a Jew, they returned the decrees. So they said, let's send Rabbi Shem Bayechai, he's Melumet Benisim, and Rabbi Shem Bayechai said, well, who else is going to go with him? Let's bring Rabbi Yaisi's son. Rabbi Yaisi said, no, it's dangerous, because Rabbi Shem Bayechai, as Tosis points out, was, it was easy for him to, to be upset, and perhaps he would ask a question on the way, and Rabbi Yossi's son would answer real quickly without thinking, and Rabbi Shimon Yechai would kill him. But Rabbi Shimon Yechai swore, he promised that he's not going to harm him. In fact, he did ask a question. He asked this question in the, of our Gemara, where do we see the source? And the Gemara says that he said, our source of the Zelchem Atome, Rabbi Shimon Yechai grew upset at Rabbi Yossi's son. Why did you answer in front of your Abayim? And in fact, he got sick, he got Askira. Rabbi Nagershim says that one of the shipmates stepped on his neck and dislodged the Askara, and he was saved after Rabbi Shimon Yechai realized that he promised that he's not going to harm him, and therefore he was saved. The Gemara says that a shed, a demon by the name of Ben Tamalyon, 
he came to help Rav Shem Bayechoy. Rav Shem Bayechoy was very upset. Why is it that Hagar the Shifcha had three malachim and I, Rav Shem Bayechoy, get a shed to help me? Regardless, I'll take any help I could get. And Ben Tamalion jumped into the body of the daughter of the Caesar and he started screaming, I want Rav Shem Bayechoy. And Rav Shem Bayechoy came and made him come out. So they, they, had, they felt that they had to give him gratitude and they said, take anything you want. And he took the decree and he ripped it up and therefore there was no decree anymore. Says the Gemara, the Rabbi Yaisi, the son of Rabbi Yaisi, was by going through the Oitrois of the Melech, he saw with his own eyes the Paroiches, the Gemara that says that he saw the Paroiches and he saw blood sprayed on it, sprinkled on it. That means that on Yom Kippur, the blood of the Haza actually reached the Paroiches. Says the Mishnah. Pigul and Noisar do not combine for the Tum of the Rabbanon, the Tum of the Hands with the Rabbanon. But for Malchus, the two of them are Mitzdarev because both of them are puzzled in the Kodesh and they are learned out from one lab. Says the Mishnah, if you have food that's a regional Tumma, if it's a regional Tumma because it touches the Ava Tumma, it always goes down one step. And if a Rishon touches food, the food becomes a Shani, goes down one step. So let's say you have in your hand a Rishon and a Shani, those two food, foods could be Mitzdarev for the lighter one. In other words, they both act as a Shani in order to be mitama shlishi, truma would become tummy. All foods are mitzdarif. Four, four things the Mishnah says. In order to passel a human being with a half a pras of tumah, in order to create two meals that are needed for an eruv, so any food is mitzdarif, you can take the two meals out of different foods. The third thing is, uh, for a beta, for the tumah of food, and a Gregarius on Shabbos. And the fifth thing is a Kekoseves for Yom Kippur and Yana de Yoima. And liquids are all Mitzdarev to passel a human being, Berevius Kimilei Lugmov, on Yom Kippur. Have a wonderful day.